everybody, I am Tim Chambers. I am a professional artist and I have Usher 2A and thank you for the opportunity to introduce myself. I have had Usher syndrome for well, my whole life obviously, but I was diagnosed about 27 years ago when I was 30. I went in for a routine eye checkup and one thing led to another and next thing you know they say, hey, you've got this eye disease, you're going to go deaf and blind. Didn't really see that coming, but um, I've learned to grow a lot from it. So uh, I'd like to share what I've learned and um, a little bit what I'm doing. So I have about 17 degrees of vision right now, which is about 10% or less than 10% of what normal vision is. I have a hard time seeing in low light and some colors get mixed up. Like I have a hard time seeing yellows and purples sometimes and of course, as an artist, there's a plenty of funny stories to go along with that. So let me show you about my hearing. On my hearing, I have what they call a bass curve. So without my hearing aids, I can hear drums. Um, I can hear my dog barking and maybe someone pounding on the floor or a door. With my hearing aids, I still depend on a lot on lip reading, but I will hear um, vowels and I can hear, let's see what else can I hear. I can hear music, which is great. And um, TV, um, regular conversation, but again, I depend on lip reading. I can't hear the birds or the rustling leaves there at the top of the screen, you know, on that graph, but um, I can whistle and I can hear that. So there's always little adjustments that come along the way. What I've been doing for the past 30 years is painting portraits. And uh, I grew up watching my father paint in the studio. He is a professional artist as well. And I thought that's what I want to do. And so with his blessing, I had good training and everything. And so I've earned a living as a portrait artist. So um, my favorite painting is outdoors and outdoors at the beach is great. I love the colors of nature. And I studied with an impressionist for a few years. Um, that's a great story. And uh, I learned to see color. And so it's just, um, it's funny. God has a sense of humor when he gives an artist this gift of painting. And it's like, oh my goodness, thank you so much. And then he said, oh, and by the way, <laughs> you've also got an eye disease. Uh, definitely makes things interesting. I also paint a lot of corporate portraits and I meet a lot of really amazing people, um, not just adults, but amazing kids as well. And what I really love about portraiture is that there's always a story. And this portrait of um, Chuck Colson, sorry, there's a neat story behind it. There's a story in how things are arranged. There's the, uh, the newspaper, Washington Post, of course. If you know anything about Watergate, Chuck Colson was a central character in that with Nixon and everything. Um, there's the Bible, which represents his faith. Um, you have the pen and the papers in his hand, which is his current manuscript at the time. At that point, he had written 23 books. Um, on the table to his right, he had, I said, wait, what are your three favorite books that you've written? And he told me, and so I have those there. And uh, there's a funny story with the painting I had to deliver it for this massive unveiling before it was done. And there was the path, you know, that was in the grass behind them that was crossing. Well, I forgot to paint it coming out the other side because I had changed the background at the last minute. Someone came up to me and said, oh, is there a symbolic meaning behind the path just going to one side of Chuck and not the other? Like, all truths end at his head? And I said, no. <laughs> I just forgot to paint the other part of the path. So there's always a, sometimes a funny aspect to a story. I paint a lot of kids. Um, the great thing about kids is you see who they really are. And, you know, we adults know how to sit upright and sit proper. And the kids, you get what you get. Um, one of the great things about kids portraits is that I learned is I'm not painting who I think I see necessarily, but I'm painting who the mom thinks she sees. So I've shown photos. I'm like, hey, this is a great portrait uh, photo for the portrait. And the mom will say, that's, that's not my kid. I'm like, of course it's your kid. But no, 
I have to find out who is that child that's in that mom's mind. That's what I'm after. I have studied with an impressionist for a few years and um, an 80 something year old impressionist who was, he's one of America's greatest paintings, painters ever. And he taught me a lot about color. And ever since I've been smitten with painting landscapes, um, painting portraits is incredibly challenging and um, which I love, but painting landscapes is, is like having dessert. Obviously there's no mother saying, no, that's not the way it looks or that tree doesn't go there. Um, it's just pure fun. I'm out there responding to the beauty in front of me. This is a scene not too far from my house, the one that's up on the screen right now. And uh, it's on the Appalachian Trail, which runs from Georgia all the way up to Maine. And we're about, not quite halfway, but the beauty on it is amazing. And I love all the hikers that I meet along the way. Here's me in my studio, and I'm working on a portrait that I call a statement portrait. And the title of it is, Please Don't Look Away. And the title of that tells the story on it. The two people, Yasmin and Dr. Kizilhan, um, Yasmin is from Syria, and she was, um, ISIS came in and just totally displaced 400,000 of the Yazidi people, and um, they were homeless. And the ISIS soldiers oftentimes would take women and just capture them and rape them repeatedly. Yasmin went through that. When she escaped, <clears throat> excuse me, she escaped to a refugee camp and uh, at one point she thought she overheard the voice of one of the men who had raped her and she snapped and goes, I can't take this anymore and she doused herself with gasoline and set herself on fire and you can't really see it in the painting from this distance probably but she suffered burns over her whole body. Dr. Kizahan enters a picture with a team from Germany where they came to rescue over 1400 Yazidi women and children and bring them back to Germany for medical healing, counseling, and so forth. And uh, Yasmin is one of them. And um, they allowed me to tell their story in the painting. And uh, they, it's, it's just amazing. She's doing really well now after a number of surgeries. What I have, <clears throat> excuse me, begin to do, done, is take my portraits and my landscape to the next level. Um, I was talking with my retinal specialist at Johns Hopkins and I said, hey, I'm trying to see colors like I used to. Are there special glasses for that? And what he had said was, hey, Tim, why don't you show us how you see? Paint the world as you see it, not what you think it should be or what it used to be for you. And so that's what I've been beginning to be doing. Um, the photo on the left side of your screen is how the scene looks to someone with normal vision. I asked my wife, I said, hey, let's take a picture and I want you to match this so it looks like what you're seeing. And she did, and that's what we, she saw. Um, cameras don't do adjusted for color, but the photo on the right is my painting. And what that is, is a quick study to show, here's how I see that scene. And you can see there's a difference in, especially where the light is coming over the tops of the trees where you might see the distinction of all the leaves at the top. For me, I don't. Uh, the sunlight just kind of obliterates that. But let me let me show you some more pictures about that. So here is, um, before we get into that, let me just talk to you about some other artists. Edgar Degas was one of the original French Impressionists and he had fine vision. So the picture on the left is of a figure study he did, a woman combing her hair and his, his vision was clear. But then he began to lose the acuity in his central vision. And years later, everything was blurry to him. And you can see the difference in his painting. You know, one on the right, woman drying her hair. Uh, it's more coarse and lacks the details that he had in his earlier paintings. Another French Impressionist, Walter, <laughs> Walter Claude Monet. I was thinking Walter Lily Pond. Not Walter Monet, but Claude Monet, um, he also had eye trouble and he had cataracts. Um, he didn't 
want to submit to having surgery because another artist friend of his, Mary Cassatt, had cataracts and it didn't go well. And this is over 120 years ago, so times have changed. But um, with the cataracts, his vision is getting worse, losing acuity and his color sense. And let me show you what I learned about this. If you take a color scale like those shown on this screen, and the left side, that's what a color scale would look like to someone with clear vision. And that painting corresponds with it. The colors are clear, um, the acuity, the details are sharp. Well, 20 years later, with uh, Monet's cataracts getting really bad and very brown, that's what the same color scale would look like to somebody with very advanced cataracts. Dingy, um, brownness, and fuzzy. So, and that shows up in Monet's painting. So, this is the color scale, what it looks like to me. I thought I was going to run the same test. And so, what I did is I took that color scale and I um, compared it to what it looks like indoors when my eyes are adjusted to the light. And what you see on the right side of your screen is that's me holding that color scale. Uh, it's a medium gray background with crisp colors all the way across. I can see them all distinctly and crisply. Um, I have a little bit of a hard time with the four green bars that are on the left side. You know, they go from being yellowish green to bluish green. In certain lights, I can't tell the difference on those. In other lights, I can. So like an incandescent light, I can't see um, a yellow highlighter pen's markings on a, you know, um, a book, you know, um, a page that you're reading. But bring it by a window in daylight, and I can see the yellow just like that. So now let me show you what happens. So this is the color scale inside by daylight. That's what I see. Now, if I was to step outside, you know, say it's midday, and the light is just like you see here on me, and I step outside into bright noonday sunlight, that's what that same color scale looks like to me. Um, it kind of, it's almost like I'm looking through this white haze. Um, everything gets lighter, even the black. It's no longer black to me. It's kind of like a light medium gray. The only color that is a rectangle that's distinctive is that white one. Um, everything else is kind of hazy, like you're looking through a dirty windshield with the sunlight beating on it. Now, what happens when I step from that bright light back inside? Let's take a look. So at the bottom of your screen there, you can see the same color scale now. And that's what it looks like to me when I come inside. I Everything looks really dingy. It looks dark. Um, I have a hard time making out the distinction, the edges of all the you know, rectangles, of the squares. Um, even the white is far from being white. It's kind of like a dingy gray. So that's what happens when, uh, I, and I don't quite understand the scientific part of behind it yet, but I'm working on that. And I will be sharing that in my exhibit at the Usher Conference virtual conference. But basically, when you have someone like me who goes from one lighting condition to another, uh, it really helps if you're patient. You know, instead of like, just start walking, I can't see when I first go outside. It's, it's just too bright. And same if I go inside, like if we're outside and we say, hey, let's go in here and grab a bite to eat at this pub. It's really dark. It's like all black for me for a first minute or so. And so, what my wife would do, or friends, they'll just kind of do small talk with me for a minute, and then we'll kind of uh, say, hey, can you, can you see now? <laughs> can you see, you know, the tables? And we're not going to walk into somebody or walk into someone's table. Yes, and so then we move forward. So it's just something to keep in mind as you, when you're with somebody like me. Now, here's the fun part. <clears throat> Putting the scale aside for a moment, what I did is I decided to test how things look. So I found there's a church steeple not too far from my house I can walk to. And I set up my easel, and there's me painting. 
and you can see the church steeple in the background. And what I did was I painted that same church steeple in different lighting conditions, kind of like Monet painting the haystacks or the or the uh, cathedrals in different lighting situations. But I did that with the church steeple. So the one here, that's a finished painting, and that's what that scene looks like to me. So you can see the distinction of the whole church and everything, where for me, on the left side of that screen, um, you can see that. In bright sunlight, I can't see that. I can see the picture now, but in bright sunlight, when that sunlight is coming out from behind the steeple, the sunlight just kind of obliterates everything. I can't see the roof line. It's almost like there's yellow pixie dust just spread, sprinkled through the whole scene. And that's what it looks like to me. So let me show you some other examples. So in here, there's four scenes, same church steeple, but different daylight situation. The one on the left is twilight. So the sun hasn't come up yet. Um, night is still kind of lingering. And I can see that, that the steeple and I can see the church building. I can see the edge of the roof line and the building contour and everything, no problem. Things still have kind of a, um, of course, the colors aren't like bright, like on a middle of a sunny day or anything, but I can see everything. Now, sun hiding, the second from the left there, that's where the day is starting to begin. The sunlight's starting to come up, and it's behind the steeple there. So there's no, <clears throat> excuse me, no bright light just blasting away, but it's the, the sky is getting lighter and it's starting to affect things. The third from the left, sun peaking. Now that's like in the previous uh, slide that you saw where the sun is coming from behind the steeple and now it's starting to dominate. That sunlight is sending that yellow pixie dust over everything and edges get obscured. And then the one on the far right, sun high, that's where the sun is up in the sky and everything bright. Um, that's where you have your sunglasses on and you can see, for me, the top of that steeple is is lost in the sunlight and everything else has this really light uh, cast from the bright sky on it. So that's one example. Let me show you two more. Here are two. One is the same steeple on a cloudy overcast day that's on the left side and I can see the steeple everything there has that cloudy day grayness about it like it's about to be misty out almost and then on the right side is that sun peaking now you can compare same steeple but that's how different it looks for me so and I don't know how it is for other people with Usher I have found that everybody with Usher has um, different experiences. Some people feel better when they have a baseball cap on. Some people say, no, that doesn't help me. So it can be very independent from one person to another. The main thing is if you know somebody with Usher, take the time to just ask them. Put yourself in a different situation and say, okay, when you're looking at this, describe what you see. You know, even looking out a window with window panes, ask them, can you see the window pane? Sometimes the light just kind of wraps around the window pane and we can't see that crisp, you know, window pane like you can. Um, what else? You could ask him what it's like in different situations, in a restaurant, at nighttime, in the moonlight, um, with the car shining the headlights on a bright day, or a sunny day, um, a hazy day. The more you ask, the more you understand, and it really makes life easier for people like me. And it's, um, it can be kind of fun to learn those things as well. Okay, so here's two other paintings. These are not part of the steeple thing, but um, you can see the painting on the left. I am I'm just in love with the color on these roofs in town here. I, my goal in that painting was to capture the bright sunlight coming down on the roofs. I just think it's, I love sunlight. I love warmth. So that was my goal, so that someone would look at that and say, oh, that feels like a hot summer day. The painting on the right is called A New Day, that's also in the summer, and that is a sunrise. And I was getting the sense of sunlight coming up from behind the buildings. And you can see it's like in that steeple painting 
the sunlight just kind of makes the trees and the roof lines and the chimneys start to get shrouded in that yellow pixie dust, the sunlight pixie dust again. Um, fairy dust maybe. But what's funny is if you look at the, uh, the foliage in the front of the painting on the right, I can see it clearly. It's crisp. It's um, defined. And that's because it's not ha it doesn't have the sunlight right behind it. Now, how can that help you? Well, somebody like me, when you're standing in front of a bright window or something bright is behind you, you become very hard to see. But if you're standing in front of something dark, that makes it easier for me to see. If something bright is shining on your face, but you're in front of something dark, that's the easiest way for me to see your face. And in my case, lip read. Well, I'm honored to share my work with you at the 12th annual Ush Connection Conference. In addition to sharing how a person with Usher sees, um, you're gonna find a host of original paintings and prints that will be for sale to assist the coalition's efforts to reach and help people. So this is just a small selection of the paintings that I'll have available. Um, there will be an online gallery and these paintings can be purchased and shipped to you. Now I've been a full-time portrait artist for 30 years, maybe longer if you count all my training. And um, despite Usher syndrome, I am painting better than I ever have. And part of it is because I can see what's in front of me, so I can see you. Um, and I also have a lifetime of knowledge up there and experience. So if you are interested in having a portrait painted, I'd be happy to talk to you about that. And um, I am very happy to travel anywhere in the world, especially even exotic vac uh, vacation spots. That's a joke, but I am willing. I love uh, traveling. You also have prints there, and these are a fraction of the cost of the original paintings, obviously. But just so you know, a generous portion of all sales of any artwork that you purchase from me will be donated to the coalition to help find and connect the global Usher syndrome community, moving us all closer to treatment and a cure. For more information, see the Usher Syndrome Coalition website and you'll find details there. I really look forward to seeing you at the virtual conference. I, th I know we all thought we'd be in Texas this next month, but um, I think we're, what it sounds like, they've got a great week planned for us virtually. And, um, and the good thing is we don't all have to wear masks, and so I'll be able to lip read anybody who's talking, so that's really good. For more information, go to ushersyndrome.org. That's usher-syndrome.org. You'll find information about the conference, about the exhibition, and obviously a plethora of helps and resources for anybody with Usher or somebody who knows somebody with Usher. If you'd like to find out more informa information about me or read my story, uh, go to timothychambers.com and you'll find everything you want there. Thank you for spending your time with me and I hope you have a terrific conference and please check in and I'll be happy to share more of what I'm learning in my study about how somebody with Usher sees. Take care and thank you so much for spending the time. And again, I hope you have a great conference as I try to figure out how to turn this exhibit off. And somebody like me, you know, you have to keep scouting around the computer and there you go. So everybody take care and have a good, good conference.